It cannot easily be explained. It cannot be seen or heard. It cannot be touched, and yet it can mobilize the elements. It can harness nature and transform darkness at the speed of light. It is the most prolific form of energy known to man. The most efficient and versatile power we can command as our servant. It is electricity. Energy for life. Or perhaps not. I think it was Gary Newman who asked, are friends electric? Well, I suppose it depends how many thousands of volts you shove through them really, doesn't it? Welcome once again to the Public Information Film Review. In this episode we're going to be looking at two films, one shown to primary school children, the other to secondary school children. We are going to be looking at some of the source material for those public information films which frightened us as kids. We'll be receiving some sound advice from some animated poultry, and we'll be getting some lingering shots of charred bodies. You know, the sort of thing that would warrant an 18 certificate from the BBFC, but for some reason it's perfectly okay to show it to minors. First up, we're going to be looking at a movie from 1978 entitled Play Safe. An animated Robin voiced by Bernard Cribbins is watching the progress of some children at play. He's not entirely satisfied with some of their activities though. Who do they think they are? Ducks? Petrol or gas? Check for leaks. Take care. Okay, okay, so that bit wasn't in the film. As he eventually comes in a land, his choice of locale is questioned by an owl. You won't live long enough to see anything if you don't get off that wire. Hey, uh, hey? Yeah, who said that? Do you realise you're sitting on a live electric wire? Well, so what? Can't hurt us birds? It will if you touch the wire above it with your wings. Hmm? You'll get hundreds of volts through you. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, you were kidding, weren't you? No, I wasn't. And so a series of ominous warnings, accompanied by some fairly scary footage, becomes the structure and substance of a fairly jolly film. And no overhead lines about. Watch out! Oh, God. Those wires alive! Ed Miliband? No, 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 it, it couldn't have been. In this movie, it would appear that the use of boats is a complete no-no. But don't worry, the fun doesn't stop there. That's why you should never fly a kite or a model plane on a control line near to overhead wires. Yeah. When you fly your kite or model plane, remember you're in charge of a flying machine. Pilots have to observe safety rules. So must you. Ooh, nice setup, thank you. Oh. Control lines, even if made of string or nylon, can conduct electricity, especially when they're wet. Well, that was a strange piece of editing, wasn't it? It sounded like the kid's soul just got takeoff clearance. Uh, Don't forget there are live wires in substations, too. Yeah, what are these substations you keep nattering about? They're places where electricity comes in from the power stations and is distributed to all the houses and factories nearby. All the equipment here carries thousands of volts. 
people don't realize that they don't even have to touch it to get a shock. Electricity can jump gaps and pass through your body to earth. Okay, we all know where they're going with this, and uh, this piece of footage has been seen so often, there's probably no point in watching it again, is there? Is there? Oh fine, alright then. Once more for old time's sake. Go on, get it! We're not supposed to go in there. Oh, go on, there's a gap down there. A gang of kids broken yesterday. I saw them. Pass me that bit of wood. substations. Never try to get toys back yourself, otherwise you may not live to play with them again. Ooh, Jimmy! Yes, yes, I know. Scary stuff. I think it was a bit unfair of them to show a lingering close-up on the kid's burning jeans, though. This next scene here didn't actually become a public information film in its own right. It depicts a few tearaways successfully vandalising a pylon. This causes some lights to go out and means that a cyclist is going to get run over by a porn star on his way back from shooting Debbie Does Dallas. <laughs> I'm such a rebel. <laughs> I'm afraid your little girl was dead when they brought her to the hospital. She's only had the bike two days. It was a, a birthday present. Stupid kids. I have to get my hands on the vandals that cut that power line. I just don't think of the harm they can cause. The movie ends with the owl and the robin basically telling us to stay out of trouble. When you have time to kill, make sure time doesn't kill you. Then we'll see you around. Have fun. But keep safe. And, and play, play safe. safe. Fair enough. I'm too scared to go outside at all now, thank you. A good ten years separates these two movies. It's almost as if the film itself has grown up a little bit. Let's take a look at Powerful Stuff. What do you mean, no? A couple of kids go off to school. At school, a fella from the electricity board warns them not to sod about with electricity or they'll die. The kids go home. On the way home, they sod about with electricity, and they die. That's about it. No, really, that's about it. There isn't much more to add. The story begins with a little sod and his big sod brother being really impressed with a motorbike. Eventually, they meet up with a friend and go off to school, causing as much shit as possible on the way. They even manage to piss off a couple of yobs who chase them down the road. Having lost their would-be attackers, big sod and little sod notice a football in a substation and think about nicking it. Their friend, being a bit more sensible, thinks breaking into a substation is a shit idea, and they all go off to school. In science class, Big Sod and his mates are told the dangers of electricity by Ken Jones of the Electricity Board. He makes his point by showing the kids PIFs about not frying yourself alive. As with PlaySafe, Powerful Stuff contains three short films which are subsequently broadcast on UK television as PIFs usually on Saturday mornings when children such as myself would want to watch an episode of Airwolf and end up getting a face full of this. He was stupid. Trying to prove how tough he was. I had a go at them kids. Why do you fly your kites around here, eh? We thought it would be okay, but the wind changed. Lucky they let go of it. They'd have been electrocuted. We should have told the police. Suppose you never knew about high voltage electricity. You're crazy! He ignored the danger signs. Leave it there! He was stupid. He wouldn't come down. He didn't know electricity would go through the kite. It just jumped through thin air. 
He never touched the wire. He never touched it. Nice stuff. Big Sod is actually under the impression that you have to touch the electrical apparatus in the substation before it can electrocute you. Such is not the case. Sadly, he decides to ignore the rest of the lecture and sit there listening to Gloria Gaynor dreaming about being a biker. I'm no expert on bikers, but I'm pretty certain they wouldn't be listening to Gloria Gaynor. You don't have to touch. Electricity jumps gaps straight from the electrical equipment through thin air to anything near. You, if you're close, you wouldn't stand a chance. Having totally missed this bit, and still sure he knows more than a bloke from the lecky board, Big Sod and Little Sod and their mate all go home, when Big Sod decides to retrieve the football. Oh, look at that. It's only a loose connection. <sighs> Keep looking out. Taken Tom off to. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Get a football! Ball, 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 ball. No, Darren! Darren? How did he get in? Darren! This way! Tom! Darren! Darren! I'm sorry to say this, but I have no sympathy whatsoever. Perhaps I have become desensitised having watched the film more than a few times, but Big Sod and Little Sod both die for a football. A poxy football. Well done, dickheads. Their mate is now left to contemplate the entirety of the preceding 11 minutes, and generally reflect on how shit the day has been. Ends. Now I'm not going to compare these two films. To be honest, it wouldn't be practical or fair. Both movies were made 10 years apart from each other, and made for different age groups. The first thing worth noting is how effective these films are in spite of the differences in approach. PlaySafe seeks to instruct younger children who are unaware of the dangers posed by electricity. In so doing, it gives us the very basics in terms of safety, whilst using the cartoon character device to keep younger children interested. The only major drawback to this approach is that when the cartoon parts are juxtaposed with real-life harrowing death and injury, the overall effect is to leave the adults feeling uneasy and the children having the unmitigated piss scared out of them. Powerful stuff goes a little further in meeting younger teenagers where they are, even going to the lengths of setting the main part of the film in a classroom, knowing that's where it was going to be shown. Annoying as I've found most of the characters, the acting is actually very good, considering that it's not being made for television. This demonstrates a genuine care for the subject matter and the audience for which it was intended. The film doesn't just inform, as is the point, but it warns against bravado, the emotion which gets Darren killed. As usual with PIFs, my main gripe is not the subject matter, the message, the acting, or the camera work, or anything like it. Indeed, it's quite amazing just how these films excel in such respects, given that some theatrical releases fall down on these points. What is amazing is that 30 years down the line, no one remembers the message, or the point they were trying to make, or indeed the safety they were trying to teach. People just remember that they were shit your pants scary. Is that really what they were going for? I think not. Join us next time when we'll be looking at a couple more films on the same subject, this time from the 90s. Till then, take care of yourselves.